Chapter 4 of Memory, How to Develop, Train, and Use It Memory Systems The subject of memory development is not a new one by any means. For two thousand years, at least, there has been much thought devoted to the subject. Many books written thereupon, and many methods or systems invented, the purpose of which has been the artificial training of the memory. Instead of endeavoring to develop the memory by scientific training and rational practice and exercise along natural lines, there seems to have always been an idea that one could improve on nature's methods, and that a plan might be devised by the use of some trick the memory might be taught to give up her hidden treasures. The law of association has been used in the majority of these systems, often to a ridiculous degree. Fanciful systems have been built up, all artificial in their character and nature, the use of which, to any great extent, is calculated to result in a decrease of the natural powers of remembrance and recollection, just as in the case of natural aids to the physical system, there is always found a decrease in the natural powers. Nature prefers to do her own work, unaided. She may be trained, led, directed, and harnessed, but she insists upon doing the work herself or dropping the task. The principle of association is an important one, and forms a part of natural memory training, and should be so used. But when pressed into service in many of the artificial systems, the result is the erection of a complex and unnatural mental mechanism, which is no more an improvement upon the natural methods than a wooden leg is an improvement upon the original limb. There are many points in some of these systems which may be employed to advantage in natural memory training by divorcing them from their fantastic rules and complex arrangement. We ask you to run over the list of the principal systems with us that you may discard the useless material by recognizing it as such and cull the valuable for your own use. The ancient Greeks were fond of memory systems. Simonides, the Greek poet who lived about 500 B.C., was one of the early authorities, and his work has influenced nearly all of the many memory systems that have sprung up since that time. There is a romantic story connected with the foundation of his system. It is related that the poet was present at a large banquet attended by some of the principal men of the place. He was called out by a message from home and left before the close of the meal. Shortly after he left, the ceiling of the banquet hall fell upon the guests, killing all present in the room and mutilating their bodies so terribly that their friends were unable to recognize them. Simonides, having a well-developed memory for places and position, was able to recall the exact order in which each guest had been seated and therefore was able to aid in the identification of the remains. This occurrence impressed him so forcibly that he devised a system of memory based upon the idea of position which attained great popularity in Greece, and the leading writers of the day highly recommended it. The system of Simonides was based upon the idea of position. It was known as the topical system. His students were taught to picture in the mind a large building divided into sections, and then into rooms, halls, etc. The thing to be remembered was visualized as occupying some certain space or place in that building, the grouping being made according to association and resemblance. When one wished to recall the things to consciousness, all that was necessary was to visualize the mental building and then take an imaginary trip from room to room, calling off the various things as they had been placed. The Greeks thought very highly of this plan, and many variations of it were employed. Cicero said, By those who would improve the memory, certain places must be fixed upon, and of those things which they desire to keep in memory, symbols must be conceived in the mind and ranged, as it were, in those places. Thus the order of places would preserve the order of things, and the symbols of the things would denote the things themselves, so that we should use the places as waxen tablets and the symbols as letters. Quintilian advises students to fix in their minds places of the greatest possible extent, diversified by considerable variety, 
such as a large house, for example, divided into many apartments. Whatever is remarkable in it is carefully impressed on the mind, so that the thought may run over every part of it without hesitation or delay. Places we must have, either fancied or selected, and images or symbols which we may invent at pleasure. These symbols are marks by which we may distinguish the particulars which we have to get by heart. Many modern systems have been erected upon the foundation of Simonides, and in some of which cases students have been charged high prices for the secret. The following outline given by K gives the secret of many a high-priced system of this class. Select a number of rooms and divide the walls and floor of each, in imagination, into nine equal parts or squares, three in a row. On the front wall, that opposite the entrance, of the first room, are the units. On the right-hand wall, the tens. On the left hand, the twenties. On the fourth wall, the thirties, and on the floor, the forties. Numbers ten, twenty, thirty, and forty each find a place on the roof above their respective walls, while fifty occupies the center of the room. One room will thus furnish fifty places, and ten rooms as many as five hundred. Having fixed these clearly in the mind, so as to be able readily and at once to tell exactly the position of each place or number, it is then necessary to associate with each of them some familiar object or symbol, so that the object being suggested its place may be instantly remembered, or when the place be before the mind, its object may immediately spring up. When this has been done thoroughly, the objects can be run over in any order from beginning to end, or from end to beginning, or the place of any particular one can at once be given. All that is further necessary is to associate the ideas we wish to remember with the objects in the various places, by which means they are easily remembered and can be gone over in any order. In this way, one may learn to repeat several hundred disconnected words or ideas in any order after hearing them only once. We do not consider it necessary to argue in detail the fact that this system is artificial and cumbersome to a great degree. While the idea of position may be employed to some advantage in grouping together in the memory several associated facts, ideas, or words, still the idea of employing a process such as the above in the ordinary affairs of life is ridiculous, and any system based upon it has a value only as a curiosity or a mental acrobatic feat. Akin to the above is the idea underlying many other systems and secret methods, the idea of contiguity in which words are strung together by fanciful connecting links. Feinagel describes this underlying idea or principle as follows. The recollection of them is assisted by associating some idea of relation between the two, and as we find by experience, that whatever is ludicrous is calculated to make a strong impression on the mind, the more ridiculous the association is the better. The systems founded upon this idea may be employed to repeat a long string of disconnected words and similar things, but have but little practical value, notwithstanding the high prices charged for them. They serve merely as curiosities, or methods of performing tricks to amuse one's friends. Dr. Kothe, a German teacher, about the middle of the nineteenth century, founded this last school of memory training, his ideas serving as the foundation for many teachers of high-priced systems or secret methods since that time. The above description of Feinagel gives the key to the principle employed. The working of the principle is accomplished by the employment of intermediates, or correlatives as they are called. For instance, the word chimney and leaf would be connected as follows. Chimney, smoke, wood, tree, leaf. Then there are systems or methods based on the old principle of the figure alphabet, in which one is taught to remember dates by associating them with letters or words. For instance, one of the teachers of this class of systems wished his pupils to remember the year 1480 by the word 
B-I-G-R-A-T, the capitals representing the figures in the date. Comment is unnecessary. The student will find that nearly all the systems or secret methods that are being offered for sale in courses, often at a very high price, are merely variations, improvements upon, or combinations of the three forms of artificial methods named above. New changes are constantly being worked on these old plans, new tunes played on the same old instruments, new chimes sounded from the same old bells. And the result is ever the same in these cases, disappointment and disgust. There are a few natural systems on the market, nearly all of which contain information and instructions that make them worth the price at which they are sold. As for the others, well, judge for yourself after purchasing them if you so desire. Regarding these artificial and fanciful systems, K says, all such systems for the improvement of the memory belong to what we have considered the first or lowest form of it. They are for the most part based on light or foolish associations, which have little foundation in nature, and are hence of little practical utility, and they do not tend to improve or strengthen the memory as a whole. Bacon says that these systems are barren and useless, adding, for immediately to repeat a multitude of names or words once repeated before, I esteem no more than rope dancing, antic postures, and feats of activity, and indeed they are nearly the same things, the one being the abuse of the bodily as the other of the mental powers, and though they may cause admiration, they cannot be highly esteemed. And as another authority has said, the systems of mnemonics as taught are no better than crutches, useful to those who cannot walk, but impediments and hindrances to those who have the use of their limbs, and who only require to exercise them properly in order to have the full use of them. In this work there shall be no attempt to teach any of these trick systems that the student may perform for the amusement of his friends. Instead, there is only the desire to aid in developing the power to receive impressions, to register them upon the memory, and readily to reproduce them at will, naturally and easily. The lines of natural mental action will be followed throughout. The idea of this work is not to teach how one may perform feats of memory, but instead to instruct in the intelligent and practical use of the memory in the affairs of everyday life and work. End of chapter 4